right, guys. Welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And guys, we are coming to you for your week three preview episode of the Rams versus Cardinals in Arizona. The Rams are coming off a win last week against the Atlanta Falcons at home, and now they're heading to the desert to play the Arizona Cardinals, a division rival. Jake, it's always fun to have a division rival game. Um, always just feels like there's a, a little more extra on the line. No matter what week it is, you know, you're playing team of your division, makes a win that much sweeter, and there is, you know, kind of an intense rivalry uh, with the Arizona Cardinals for some fans. So let's get into it, Jake. I mean, the Arizona Cardinals obviously are coming off um, an offseason where they paid Kyler Murray, one of the most uh, high-paid quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, we all know that because there was a lot of controversy around that signing, you know, the video game uh, clause and and <laughs> that whole fun Brutal. thing. Brutal. Uh, but, you know, Jake, looking at this game, uh, the Arizona Cardinals offense looks a little bit different. And we're going to talk about that later in the episode where we want, run through the depth chart. But for fans who aren't aware, uh, this team has changed quite a bit, uh, more than probably some people think they have in terms of their depth chart. But Jake, I want to start this episode off by talking about some of the Rams moves uh, because the Rams made some big moves this week. So I'm going to highlight these really quick and then I want you to give your thoughts on these uh, moves that the Rams made. Um, so I'm going to pull this up here. Um, Jake, okay, we signed some people to our 53 roster. Um, so we added Tack McKinley, Sean Jolly, Kendall Blanton, who we're all familiar with. And... Um, is it Obush Ode? Obush Ode? Yeah, we're just gonna say yeah, that. Yeah, Ode uh, Abushi. Abushi. Okay. Uh, so those four guys we added to the active fifty three. Jake, we subtracted Tremaine Ingram, Troy Hill, uh, Bryson Hopkins, and Kier Thomas. Now, for the guys we subtracted, Jake Ingram uh, had a season ending injury last week, which we talked about on that episode. Uh, very unfortunate, obviously. Um, that was his first professional start. Troy Hill also suffered a major is uh, injury last week. Bryson Hopkins, Jake, has been suspended um, three games for a violation of the substance abuse policy. Now, I want to point that out for everybody because it was initially reported that it was steroids. It, you know, uh, that's usually when people get suspended for a type of substance. It's assumed it's steroids. Uh, this was not steroids, Jake. We don't know what it is. It's not going to be released. We just know that it's a substance that is banned by the NFL. So Bryson Hopkins is suspended three games. And then Kier Thomas was also subtracted. Um, do you have any thoughts about any of the guys that we let go before we talk about the guys that we added? Yeah. So, you know, obviously Ankrum, like you said, goes on IR. Uh, Hill goes on IR. The hope is that Hill will be back. McVay made it sound like he will be back at some point. Shouldn't be season ending, although it's decent groin damage uh, that he's he's dealing with. It, it's not the season-ending type, but it, it's something yeah. to definitely be concerned about. Um, looking at Hopkins, I mean, you know, it's a bummer, but he'll be back in three games. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kier Thomas, I think, will be back on the practice squad. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think the Rams had to keep a guy like Kier Thomas. They had to keep Lance McCutcheon. And I think Lance McCutcheon could have this same fate at some point this season if they feel like enough time has elapsed and they're not going to use him on the 53. They might try to, you know, wave him, bring him back on the practice squad. I think they'll get Kier Thomas back. Um, but I'm actually really bummed that they lost uh, Benton Whitley, who you're going to probably talk about yeah. because uh, the Chiefs stole him. So the Rams basically kind of traded uh, with the Chiefs and, and stole Kendall Blanton back. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about Whitley when we talk about... Uh, he's currently on the practice... Was He was on the practice squad. Um, yeah. But I want to talk about the guys we added to the 53 real quick before we get into the practice squad. Because Tack mm -hmm. McKinley, Jake, what I always think of... So Tack McKinley is an edge rusher. He went to UCLA. He was drafted by the Falcons, I believe. And what I always remember, and I don't know if you remember this, Jake, about Tack, is when he was drafted, he was at the draft on draft night. He was a first-round pick, I think. It might have been second. I'm pretty sure he was a first-round pick by the Falcons. And he had that kind of epic speech where, you know, you get drafted, you're on the stage uh, with the commissioner, and then you come off and you're interviewed by somebody. And when he was getting interviewed after he came off stage, he had a really impassionate, uh, a really passionate kind of, really well-spoken and, and moving speech, I think, about his grandmother. 
um, and or his mom and, and the people that had raised him. And I just vividly remember watching that on draft night and being like, I'm going to root for that kid. Uh, and now he's a Ram. So, you know, I, I sadly haven't probably gotten to see as much of him in his career as I would like to. But I think it's really cool that, you know, that's he stood out to me for that reason. And now he's on my team. Uh, so we added him. Um, and then Blanton, obviously, very excited to get him back. Most of us didn't think the Rams should have ever let him go. Uh, ended up going to the Chiefs, and now he's back. So, uh, And then also Sean Jolly and, and uh, Obey. Uh, so, Jake, what are your... <laughs> your favorite what, name. <laughs> I, just, I just always butcher these names. Jake, uh, what are your thoughts on all those guys? I didn't butcher Jolly, though. That's pretty easy. Yeah. And McKinley and Blanton. It's, <laughs> is it Ode? It's Ode. Yeah, I mean, it's a dope name. It's Ode Abushi. Yeah, it's all the cool ones that I can't... Yeah, I mean, that's sounds like he be, would come from Notre Dame. I mean, you know, Notre Dame's always got uh, Ogan I just Neji don't, and... I hate butchering names because everybody thinks I'm doing it on purpose and I'm not. And that happens. Anyway, so, uh, okay. so your McKinley thing is kind of funny to me because I remember Tag for a different reason. I was a content creator when he came out and we had not... Uh, we had not collabed. We did not know each other existed at this point in time, but uh, I may have made a tweet. Uh, There's a lot of Rams Twitter that was all over uh, getting Tack McKinley, all over it. And I said, I didn't want him. And I think it was Sosa, uh, my my friend there, uh, he, <laughs> he said something along the lines of like, oh man, we got to get Tack McKinley. And I'm like, nah, I, I want this guy. I don't, I'll be annoyed if the Rams draft of Tack McKinley or something like that. And then Tack McKinley slid right into the thread on Twitter and was like, oh, hey, what's up? It's like, bet. Like, <laughs> it's like, it was so awkward. I was like, oh, no. And then, like, Sosa and I had a laugh about it. Uh, a lot of Rams Twitter at the beginning when I first started DTR. Uh, I don't even know the podcast was around uh, when this happened, but. It was it was a little bit of an awkward moment. It was my first like kind of welcome to Twitter type of deal. Um, so I remember him for that. But no, I, I like McKinley because this is a relatively low risk move, and I mean, there's really no risk involved, not even low. Uh, he's coming off a torn Achilles, you know, ten months off it. He joked to Jordan Rodriguez, "Look, like you know, I thought I could come back in five. Cam Akers did it, so um, you know, I'm glad he's back." And he was on the Titans practice squad. The Rams scooped him up off there. Spent some time with the Falcons. Obviously, he was drafted there. Um, but you saw you know, what he could do with the Browns last year. He started a couple games, had two and a half sacks. Uh, I think he's somebody that could be a little bit of a reclamation project here. Still young. Uh, the Rams could still get the most out of him, at least in my opinion, playing with AD, playing with Sean, playing with Greg. And then, of course, you look at you know Leonard Floyd off the edge. I think this is a good fit for him. Um, so I like that. Then looking at Blanton, very excited about Blanton being back. You and I both liked him. We've been a fan of his since they signed him as a UDFA. Because like we talked about when they signed him as a UDFA, uh, you know, it's no knock on Albert, you know, Aguebanam or however you say his name. Um, but Alberto. Kendall Blanton, yeah, we call him Alberto. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, Albert O, he's a good receiver, right? He's a good receiving tight end. There's a reason why he's still in the NFL. And, you know, he's starting for Denver. But when you look at the talent Blanton had, he was kind of, you know, relegated as just a blocking tight end coming out. And I think, like you knew, because you watched Mizzou football, you knew this guy could, you know, actually catch the ball and, and he could be a decent receiving threat. Rams knew that they hung on to him for a little bit. Then eventually he ended up getting on that 53 and he was a huge contributor in the NFC title game. They probably don't even make to the Super Bowl without him because Higby got hurt in that game. So I, I'm glad he's back. You know, now you have two tight ends. You have Skoranek, who is the wide receiver, fullback, tight end. I don't know. You know, he's all sorts of positions. And uh, there is a rumor here that Jordan actually reported. There's a good chance that Roger Carter the uh, UDFA that I like, um, he is on the practice squad. There's a good chance he's going to get called up to the active roster on Sunday and get a jersey and actually play in it. So that's uh, that's some depth there. You know, obviously the Bryson Hopkins thing sucks, but they're able to you know patch that up there, bringing back a familiar face in Kendall Blanton. Uh, they also have Jacob Harris too if they want to use him there. 
Now looking at Jolly, uh, love this move. I think this is my favorite. Jolly can start right away. I think Jolly is a hell of a player. I was watching his tape. The thing I love about Jolly, he fits what the Rams want. They want the shorter, uh, quicker corner, and not just quicker in the fast, you know, in the fast department, right? You don't want to necessarily have just the speed, but you also want to have the processing and, you know, just in coverage. I mean, can you read and react? And that's something Jolly does. You know, looking at the tape, this is a wrap tackler. You love to see that. A corner that isn't just an ankle biter, but a guy that can wrap up and make a play. Uh, on top of that, you know, he had some good contribution to this Browns team in the uh, preseason. I really liked what I saw. The tape I saw against Chicago was very uh, eye-opening. Uh, you know, this is somebody that can definitely help you. If you blitz him, he can come in and rush the passer. But on top of it, he trusts his mechanics so much. He trusts his technique so much that he's not going to really grab Alexis. He's not going to have, you know, you're not going to have to worry about him if you put him on an island where he's just going to get all sorts of penalties and such. I think he's come into a really good situation for the Rams. They wanted him in UDFA and he decided to go uh, to the Browns and sign with them. But this is somebody that they've been eyeing for a while out of Appalachian State. He is a rookie this year, and I think he's going to get an opportunity to play. Um, and then the last guy here that you mentioned, Ibushi. I love this. A guy that started for the Chargers. He has familiarity. He started for the Lions, and you know he played with Matthew Stafford. So I love adding him to the roster. Now he'll probably back up uh, you know, Alaric Jackson, who had a hell of a game. Um, but that's how I see it. I think it's it's four good additions, but I love the Jolly pickup probably the most, which is going to surprise some people because I was just as surprised as you are when I watched this tape. Well, let's talk about the practice squad um, because there were some guys added to the practice squad as well. So uh, the, his first name is slipping my mind, but he's an edge rusher out of Iowa. It's Van Valkenburg. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, he's a rookie named- this year. Yeah, it's totally slipping yeah. my mind, his first name. Uh, then we have Matt Skura, who's a center. He used to start for the Ravens. 65 starts. Yeah, uh, so impressive pickup there. And then an old friend, Jake, Malcolm Brown, who Rams fans should be familiar with. He was the running back for the Rams uh, for a few seasons. So he's back, and he's on the practice squad. Jake, what are your thoughts about these ad- additions? Because I love them all, personally. I think the Rams really knocked it out of the park. Uh, I, I mean, I tweeted earlier today. I was like, I can't remember a time where the Rams have been this active during the week and picking guys off of practice squads and such. Uh, but I love it, you know, and I love their desire to go out there and make sure they have the right depth going into Sunday against the Arizona Cardinals, you know. And, you know, I really like this because it's almost like it was a retaliation. I mean, yes, you you lost some guys to IR, but they also lost Whitley. Like, he goes over the Chiefs, so it's like, hey, we're going to take Blanton. We're going to take Sean Jolly because, look, like, we need a guy here. I mean, you know, if there's a chance that we don't have Troy Hill, obviously he's out, but then, you know, David Long, uh, you talk about him as well as, uh, you know, Jacoby Durant showing up on the uh, injury report. Then you're down to, if those guys don't play, it's Jalen Ramsey, Robert Rochelle, and Darion Kendrick. So you do need some depth there. I like that they went out and did that and got that depth. Um, I mean, altogether, you know, I just like what they did, especially going out and getting Malcolm Brown. I mean, we've talked about the running back room a ton on this show. And while I do like, I feel comfortable with the top three when they're healthy, Kyron's out. Cam Akers hasn't looked like what we hope he's going to. That could change. And Daryl Henderson looks really good, but he's not being utilized in that way. And on top of it, he has had injury issues. So when you look at it, would you rather have, you know, a guy that was there in 2020 with those two? And honestly, he scored the first touchdown. Fun fact, scored the first touchdown at SoFi Stadium. Or would you rather have Jake Funk? And I think I'd rather have Malcolm Brown as the number three and have Jake Funk as just a special teamer at this point. So I like the the move. He's a leader. He's a veteran. And uh, I don't know if you saw, but Liam Cohen was very, very excited to get him back in the building. Yeah, I definitely like the move, um, all of those moves, but especially the Malcolm Brown move because it definitely adds some security, adds uh, you know a veteran, somebody who's been in the building before. I think it's going to really help, like you said, you know, because we're a little shaky at running back at the moment. Um, but Jake, before we move on, let's talk about the guys that we lost from the practice squad, Benton, Whitley, uh, and Overton, specifically uh, Whitley, because he was a guy that Rams fans really liked. We thought he played really well. 
Um, really good dude. Uh, thought he had a lot of potential. We lost him. He is now in Kansas City. Uh, so, Jake, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, I'm so bummed. I, I really like him. Uh, I think he was somebody that the Rams really liked and they had plans for him. But at the end of the day, you can't fault the player. You know, he's getting an opportunity to go to the 53-man roster. He wouldn't have been going on the Rams 53. They didn't even call him up. So makes no. it's a no-brainer there for Whitley. He joins a good Kansas City team that's undefeated, that needs some help at, you know, edge and, you know, can help special teams. So he goes on the 53. He'll get like normal game checks and not just practice squad stuff. Makes total sense. Uh, over 10 is one of those guys where they added him in case Orzek, the long snapper currently who's starting, who's been very good for them. Um, you know, in case he ended up going down with an injury, he already was dealing with an injury, but if he wasn't able to actually compete on uh, last Sunday, then Overton probably would have taken over. But the fact is, Orzek, he pushed through it. He played on Sunday, and the Rams were like, all right, we don't need to keep another long snapper uh, on the practice squad. So that is uh, the decision they ultimately made. It has nothing to do with Overton's talent or anything like that. They just didn't need another long snapper. For sure. Well, let's get into the injury report. So I'm going to read this real quick. And we are recording this on Thursday. So obviously some things could change. By Sunday, but this was, yeah, this is the current injury report. So just going to want to point that out. I'm going to pull this up here, Jake. Uh, Let's start with our Rams. So as of today, Thursday, Van Jefferson, Brian Allen, Kobe Durant, David Long Jr. and, and David Long Jr. did not practice. Neither did Aaron Donald, but that was, I believe, a veteran rest day. Um, yes, it was a veteran rest day. And then Jordan Fuller was limited in practice. So Jake, um, Van Jefferson is a guy that we thought maybe we could be getting back on Sunday. We still could. Like I said, it's it's Thursday. Um, he didn't practice at all. So I'm not quite sure that they're going to rush him back just yet. Um, guys like Brian Allen, Kobe Durant, and David Long are, I, I'm pretty sure, doubtful. Um, it's looking like they are not going to play on Sunday. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm really just not feeling good about Van Jefferson. I'm going to be honest with you, Alexis. I'm not saying that it's anything super serious or anything, but I'm just not feeling good about it. I mean, this is somebody that we thought could potentially play on in week one. Uh, the knee was always kind of hidden, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Like we didn't really hear about it. And then all of a sudden stuff came out and then they're like, oh yeah, like he's going to miss time and he has to get a procedure done. And so like this is a little concerning now. We're going into week three and, you know, he's not ready to go, uh, not even practicing into Thursday. I can't imagine they're going to rush him back without a week of practice. So I doubt he plays this week. I think it's another golden opportunity for Ben Skoranek to further show the Rams his value. Uh, they can use him at fullback, as we talked about, wide receiver, tight end. Uh, but look out because, you know, they could also use Tutu Atwell. They can use Jacob Harris uh, if they decide to bring him off the practice squad again for this game. But, you know, they're going to have options and they'll have decisions to make. Uh, They could even use Lance McCutcheon. But I think because of the injuries here in the cornerback room, I don't think we'll see Lance McCutcheon. But it is starting a little... I'm not going to say I'm, like, really concerned, Alexis, but, like, aren't you a little concerned that, you know, Van Jefferson is going into week three, not practicing, when we were kind of under the impression he was going to potentially go against the Bills week one? Yeah, it is a little concerning because I think it, it, with the Rams, you know, and it sometimes feels like injuries can be a lot more than they present them. And every team does that to an extent, but I think the Rams especially have a history of kind of downplaying injuries that end up being a lot more than what we think they are. So that I think is the concern with Van Jefferson. Uh, But like you said, it's a golden opportunity for Ben Skronik or maybe another guy to get in there, you know, and play well. I don't think it's going to, um, you know, be incredibly game changing to not have Van Jefferson out there. But I really, you know, was hoping that we could get him back. And like you mentioned last episode, his dad uh, is the wide receivers coach for the Cardinals. So we know that Van Jefferson likes to play against the Cardinals, uh, you know, and show off in, in front of his dad. So I'm yeah. sure he's bummed about that. Um, other than that, I mean, the other guys, just based on what we've been hearing, you know, especially David Long and Kobe Durant, um, just, you know, they're not going to be playing. I'm, pretty positive. That's kind of what the vibe has been from the Rams. And then Brian Allen, obviously um, still recovering with that knee. 
But let's talk about the Cardinals, Jake, because I, I was I told you before we started recording, I was looking at the Cardinals injury report and I was like, it's their whole team. It's not actually <laughs> their whole team, but it's a significant injury report. So we're going to go through it. Um, OK, guys, buckle up. So for the Arizona Cardinals, as far as people who absolutely did not practice again, this is Thursday. You have Kelvin Beecham, Marquise Brown, uh, Zach Ertz, A.J. Green. Rodney Hudson, uh, Trey McBride, Rondale Moore, Justin Pugh, Ezekiel Turner, Andy Isabella, and Trayvon Mullen. Some pretty big names there, uh, Jake, of people who just absolutely did not practice. Then you want to look at guys who had limited practice today. You have James Conner and J.J. Watts. Uh, so pretty big injury report, and I actually, I Justin Pugh, it was a rest day. Um, I accidentally combined it with everybody else. So he'll probably be fine. He'll be fine, obviously, for Sunday. But Jake, I mean, those are some those are some names uh for the Cardinals. You know, Marquise Brown, Zach Ertz, AJ Green, uh, you know, Rondale Moore, especially. I mean, a lot of offensive guys, uh, you know, and then James Conner is limited, so not quite sure what's going on there. But Jake, what could this mean for the Cardinals if they're if assuming that all of these guys that did not practice will not be playing on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, when you you look at the depth chart, or not the depth chart, but the the injury report, I mean, there are definitely a lot of rest days for sure. Um, I think Rondale really? Moore is a game breaker. Wait, hold on. I, There's a lot of rest days? Because I just saw Justin Pugh. Um, it says Beecham rest, Marquise Brown rest, Ertz, Green... Rodney what? Hudson, Pew, and I think that's it. I am looking at a different report. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So then who is not, so then who is not, did not practice? So, I mean, I thought you were looking at the same report because it's kind of the same. Uh, Beecham, Brown, Connor, Zach Ertz, Green, um, Moore. Pugh, Ezekiel Turner all did not practice. Um, but the majority of those are rest. James Connor's ankle is something to monitor. He was limited today. Um, and then Ezekiel Turner, he has an ankle. And then you had a hamstring from Rondell Moore. But the guys that did not practice on Thursday, uh, Rondell Moore, Trey McBride, and Ezekiel Turner. Uh, I think everyone's good aside from that. It's just, it's a long list. Um, but everyone appears to be good. JJ Watts limited. We know he'll play. He he's always limited, but, um, Rondell Moore would be a significant loss. And as would James Connor, cause Connor last year, people know, I mean, Connor, he scored against the Rams. I mean, the first game last year at SoFi, that Cardinals team went in there and punched the Rams right in the mouth. James Connor was a big reason for that. Um, but well, Rondell Moore's explosiveness season. Yeah, he's he struggled a little bit. Um, Rondell Moore's explosiveness, though, is something that they need back. And uh, he's still dealing with that hamstring. You're going into Friday. He hasn't practiced. I don't know if he'll be ready. So I'll be honest with you. I think they're going to be without Rondell Moore. Connor was limited with the ankle. I think they'll probably he'll probably be a game time decision. Um, but those are significant losses if they don't play against the Rams. I mean, I understand they. You know, they've had Connor this year and they haven't had Rondell Moore, but it doesn't change the fact that if they had Rondell Moore, it would certainly help their case. Well, and also they have Kyler Murray, who is kind of like a weird, it's like a weird thing with Kyler Murray because mm. he hasn't had like the best season, but then he has moments where he's just like a G code, right? Where yeah. he's just like, he makes these incredible plays. So you never really know what you're going to get out of him. He's just kind of, he's not very consistent. Um, now, the Rams, I feel, uh, especially the last time they played, know how to make Kyler Murray uncomfortable. So they the question do. is really going to be, can we do that? Um, but even so, you know, like we've talked about, they they might not have all the weapons. Um, uh, we'll also keep in mind, DeAndre Hopkins is not playing. Um, yeah. So we should point that out. DeAndre Hopkins uh, usually is on that offense. He's suspended for the first six games of the season for PEDs. So that's an advantage, uh, you know, for the Rams as well, obviously. It, you know, Kyler doesn't have his favorite target, his most talented target. So it's not, I don't think, going to be very easy for Kyler to, you know, he doesn't really have anybody, in my opinion, um, that he can lean on. 
um, against the Rams in that type of way that he would like a Hopkins. Uh, but we'll see. So Jake, just getting into it, then looking at the Rams defense, you know, while we're talking about the Cardinals offense, uh, what do you think the game plan should be for them? Because my opinion, obviously, I would normally say stop Kyler Murray. Now, I don't think that kind of like I alluded to earlier, Kyler Murray is as big of a threat lately. Like I said, he's he's very inconsistent. He has his moments. You know, we watch the highlights. Uh, I think it was against the Raiders where he just like, it was insane. He was just like, went back 20 yards, <laughs> went forward 20 yards, ran for the touchdown. You're just watching it. You're like, how is that possible? So he has a lot of moments like that. But then he's also having a lot of, you know, moments that are making Cardinals fans very angry, throwing interceptions, throwing the ball out of bounds, not being very accurate, just kind of seems kind of sporadic. So Jake, do you think the game plan is still stop Kyler Murray at all costs? Or do you think there's anybody else in the offense that the Rams need to worry about? Because in my opinion, number one threat is Kyler Murray without DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, it's always going to be Kyler Murray. Um, if, you know, James Conner's not in there, I mean, he's had a lot of success against the Rams, even going back to the Steelers. Um, so if he's not in there, then you look at Daryl Williams, who's from Kansas City, who, you know, I do like Daryl Williams. He's got a solid game, but he's not somebody that's, you know, game-breaking, right? It's the same thing with Eno Benjamin. I like Eno Benjamin. I think he's a solid player, uh, but he's not, you know, game-breaking. So uh, you look at those two guys, I don't see anything there. And then the receivers, it's like, if they could get Marquise Brown over the top, sure. But the Rams really are just not allowing those plays. I mean, I know they allowed it, you know, in garbage time, which is garbage time for the Bills. Uh, you know, they allowed a, a bomb. But, um, you know, in reality, that type of soft shell coverage, they're not going to really give those, you know, opportunities up. So when you look at that, it's really down to, you know, a former Ram and Greg Dortch, who is the leading receiver for this team, and it's who Kyler's been uncomfortable throwing to. It's him. It's uh, a guy that we mentioned, Isabella, Andy Isabella, the former second-round pick. Um, you know, he's also, you know, a guy that, um, you know, was on the injury report. And then in addition to that, you have to look at, you know, of course, you have to look uh, at Zach Ertz because, you know, Ertz definitely is somebody who can be a mismatch in coverage and, you know, we'll see how it goes. I think the the uh, the Rams have done a nice job. You look at, you know, going up against the Bills, holding Dawson Knox to like, what, one catch for under 10 yards, didn't even give up a touchdown. And then this past week, shutting down Pitts for two, car- uh, two catches for 16 yards. There's some good stuff there. You know, you can't assume that Zach Ertz is going to get going, but they might be looking early on to get them going. I think really this Cardinals team is going to need Kyler Murray to play like he did last year early on in the season that beat the Rams. Uh, he's going to have to, you know, really pick them apart, you know, manipulate the defense, uh, you know, create some throwing lanes. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I don't think this Cardinals team is as great as years past. And so I think the Rams, very talented football team, I it's going to be hard for the Cardinals to keep up scoring-wise, um, you know, if they're not picking apart or taking advantage or or doing what the defense gives them because you can have that soft shell, but when Kyler's out and running, you got to be able to bring him down. If they don't bring down Kyler, this game is going to be a game. Well, right. And that's the thing is, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to see how the Rams defense comes out because last game, uh, against the Falcons, we came out really strong. Um, as did the offense we're going to talk about our offense. Uh, so can we do that again, but can we sustain that this time? Cause that's something we didn't do the last game against the Falcons is the second, second half. I mean, our defense just completely crumbled. Right. And that's when we all started complaining about Ben don't break. So you t- you start talking about Ben don't break now with Kyler Murray. What's going to happen. It can, it, you know, it, it, I'm curious to see how it goes. I think that the Rams know at this point, they face Kyler Murray enough to understand how to approach that. Uh, like you mentioned, but I want to talk about the Arizona Cardinals defense. I'm going to run through the depth chart. I meant to do that for the offense, but we kind of covered it already. Mm -hmm. Um, But Jake, looking at this defense uh, for the Arizona Cardinals, up front, you've got Zach Allen, Rashard Lawrence, and J.J. Watt. Uh, Linebacking core. On the outside, you've got Devin Kennard and Marcus Golden. Uh, In the inside, you've got Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons. Then on their secondary, uh, you've got a corner, you've got Byron Murphy and Marco Wilson, and at safety, you've got Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. So I actually really like the Cardinals secondary. Um, 
you know, I think that that's a pretty good group of guys. I mean, I think that they don't always play up to their potential. I think uh, just one of those situations, I mean, Byron Murphy won the game for them against the Raiders uh, in overtime with that incredible pick six. Uh, And I also really liked him coming out of college when he went to Washington. You know, I like Marco Wilson, uh, Buda Baker, obviously one of the better safeties in the league. But Jake, they don't have, um, you know, they got some good pieces. J.J. Watt, you know, Isaiah Simmons, Marcus Golden has been in the league for a long time, but I think that, you know, he's still playing relatively well. So Jake, what are your thoughts on this Arizona Cardinals defense? Yeah, I, um, I don't love it. Although, you know, shout out to Marcus Golden. His father follows me on Twitter and has for years. So, uh, you know, appreciate him, but, um, I think he's a good player. You know, I think they have some guys like that, but I don't love this defense. I'll be honest with you. I really have not been a huge fan of what the Cardinals did this off season. Um, like you said, I think the secondary is, is the key piece here because you go out, you draft Byron Murphy in, in 2019, you have Buda Baker. They just gave Jalen Thompson a supplemental draft pick in the fifth round of 2019. Uh, they gave Jalen Thompson a new contract. So he got a contract extension last year's rookie, Marco Wilson, who did pick off Matthew Stafford last year, uh, I thought he had a really good rookie year coming out party. Uh, he is in his second year in the league, and I think he is a very good player. Um, so, like you said, you know they added Trayvon Mullen via uh, trade with the the Raiders. There, I mean, this is the better this is the better part of the defense. I think I, I like the secondary. Uh, that you know, I, I really like Marcus Golden, as I mentioned. Isaiah Simmons, Zayvon Collins are very good. I just don't really like up front. J.J. Watt, okay. I think Michael Dogby is having a great year early on. He's a guy that, you know, we know because he came on DTR. Uh, you know, I just, at the end of the day, though, um, I, I just don't really love this team. I, I do see there's no reason why the Rams shouldn't win. They've really done a nice job uh, against the Cardinals in Sean McVay's career. And the last time they lost in Arizona was 2014. So, I mean, as long as they play their style of football and they play their game they should win this ball game. I agree. Um, you know, and I want to talk about the Rams often specifically what we need to do better this game than we did last game, right? Because last game, and again, you, this is repeating a little bit what we talked about on our last episode. Last game, pretty much a perfect first half, right? Matthew Stafford, like we said, 12 for 12, touchdown, uh, absolutely killing it. Couldn't have asked for a better half from the Rams, right? For the most part. Second half, very much the opposite. Uh, Not a good half. (laughs) Um, A lot of, you know, had some turnovers. You know, Matthew Stafford uh, had, you know, an interception. uh, Didn't look very accurate. Just everything kind of fell apart. Some fumbles. um, Just wasn't great. So, you know, Jake, I think this would be a really good game to come out swinging against a division rival and just rack up the score, right? Now, I don't think we can do that in a sense of like I thought we were going to do with the Falcons, you know, when we were sitting here, remember, and we were like trying not to jinx it. And we were like, oh my God, maybe we'll... Didn't end up happening, right? Um, Yeah. But, and I don't think that's going to happen against the Cardinals. But I do think that we could potentially look really polished um, against this Cardinals defense. So what do you think that we need to see um, out of this offense? Do you think we should put more emphasis on running the ball um, to maybe avoid the turnovers, maybe avoid the interceptions? Or do you think, no, go out there, sling the ball, have Stafford do his thing? What do you, what do you think the approach is with this defense? Cause like I said, I like their secondary, um, I'm not as like, like their front three of Allen, Lawrence, and Watt. I mean, Watt is, is, you know, obviously good. Um, I'm just not as like high on them as, as their, their front and their linebacking core and their secondary. So in my mind, I'm kind of like, I'd like to see the run game go a little, but then I'm, we also know the Rams running game is, is struggling a little bit. So what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, I to me, I feel like they just have to go with a balanced approach. I know they want to be pass happy, and we talked about in the offseason. Like, they're going to want to throw the ball, right? But I do think you want to go balanced here, and the reason is because you do have Daryl Henderson. You do have Cam Akers. And, you know, if you can establish the run, it's going to open up play action. And when you open up play action, now all of a sudden you got Skoranek who can line up at fullback, tight end, wide receiver. He's going out for a pass. You got Cooper Cup that you have to account for. You have Allen Robinson, Tutu Atwell, Brandon Powell. I mean, they have different ways that they can go, different weapons and how they want to do things. But I think like early on, uh, just their script lately, um, you know, based on last week anyway, this the last game script to start because the first 15 players are scripted. Um, I thought it was beautiful to come out and have a tight end slip screen was beautiful. And it worked. You know, Higby did a nice job there. You you come out and you have, you know, Skoranek, uh at in the I formation. I can't remember a time where Sean McVay has used the I formation his entire time coaching the Rams. So that was exciting. Um, you know, I just feel like, you know, you can kind of stick to that formula. I mean, I'm not saying they have to be a run first team, but have more of those. Have those bootlegs, whether it's, uh, you know, out to the the right side or, or, you know, having Stafford reset uh, going against his body and then just resetting and uncorking one. I mean, I really think that, you know, Sean McVay's offense works the best when you can get play action going. The Rams do it more than anybody. They've done it more than anybody since Sean McVay has joined uh, the NFL as a head coach. And I just feel like it, you can't do play action if you're not, you know, at least showing the defense that, hey, I'm going to run the football. Play action opens up so many things. And I just feel like they got to go with more of a balanced approach. I want to see them run with Daryl Henderson more. I think it's really that simple. He had five fewer carries than Akers, had a 4.7 yards per carry average. And I thought he showed great, uh, you know, suddenness. I thought he showed. Uh, you know, accountability, taking on block, uh, taking on certain blocks in blitz, uh, you know, pass pro and, and blitz pickups. Um, so I want to see more of him. I, I also want to see more Skoranek at fullback. Uh, I don't want to see him just at fullback. I like the way they used him. It was very similar. I've already compared it in a video that I did. It's very similar to the way the Bills basically used, um, not Gary Gilliam, uh, Reggie Gilliam, their fullback. Um, you know, it was the same thing. Sean McVay saw them do it against him in week one. And so week two, he took it, you know, he does that. So I, I think that's really how they got to do it. Alexis, they got to go with more of a, you know, just a balanced approach here. And then if the passing game opens up, you don't need play action anymore. By all means, you got Matthew Stafford, throw it down the field all you want. But I think you want to set the tone early on that you're going to, you can go either way. We can do damage either way. And I think that's going to help you. Well, my next question was going to be, who do you think we see more of, Daryl Henderson or Cam Akers, right? Because I know that that you and I would like to see more of Henderson um, because contrary to what a lot of Rams fans think, Akers actually did get more carries than Henderson last game. He did. So what do you think will happen? We both know what we want to happen. Do you think that the Rams are going to give Henderson more opportunities this game than Akers? Because I do. I do think the Rams kind of saw what happened last game, and I think that Henderson's going to be probably by a lot leading the carries for the Rams this game. But do you? what do you think? Do you think the Rams make that jump yet or no? I think they do. I think Cam Akers showed them what they have right now. He's not what they want him to be and doesn't mean he can't get there. I mean, it's a long season, but as far as having him lead the team and carries, it doesn't make any sense. You want your more uh, bang for your buck, if you will, in the game. And I feel like Henderson just offers so many, so many different things. He's second in the league, Alexis, get this. He's second in the league, despite not getting any targets last week in the passing game. He's second in the league only behind Joe Mixon, for targets for running backs. He's been, uh, or sorry, not targets. He's been, uh, he's second in the league for uh, routes run by a running back. So he's run the second most routes at the running back position in the league. And he did not get a target last week. So eventually I think that's something where Sean McVay is going to go through game planning for this week. If he hasn't already see the tape, look at what happened, clean up different things. I think he's going to see that the Rams are just more explosive and they offer, there's more suddenness. There's more, uh, you know, the chance of popping off the big run when you have Henderson in there. It doesn't mean that you completely get rid of acres because acres is a good receiving back, but 
I, I think there definitely needs to be more of Henderson. I think there will be. I don't think you look at that tape. I just did. I don't think Sean McVay is going to look at that tape and be okay with some of the things that we saw. Uh, there were, you know, open, uh, you know, windows there where Cam could have cut back. And, you know, I went through it on all 22. And I mean, he just, he missed the hole. He was running into the backs of his blockers. Henderson, on the other hand, he sees the hole, he hits it. You got, you have more of that urgency that Sean McVay is talking about. You got to have more of that because Henderson has it right now. And, you know, Akers just doesn't feel like the Akers that we came to know and love in the postseason of the end of the 2020 regular season. I mean, I, I didn't see anything uh, in that postseason that I've seen now. Uh, I didn't see these tendencies. Yeah. I saw a guy that just looks so confident. He had the best. Honestly, he had some of the best rushing I've seen in a postseason. Um, so then to see him come back from this injury and, you know, he just doesn't have the yards per carry average and he, he's just not been efficient. Seems like he's lost some explosiveness. He's always trying to bounce it out to the outside. Uh, he, there might be a little bit of a confidence issue, but regardless, you got to put the best guy out there right now. And right now that's Henderson. Well, Jake, let's get into predictions mm-hmm. for this game. Uh, stat predictions. Now I'm going to make kind of a bold one, which I've avoided okay. so far in this. I see you this uh, season. I know we're only in week three, but Jake, <laughs> last week we saw rookie corner Kobe Durant get an interception, right? He's not going to be playing probably, uh, unfortunately, uh, on the injury report, did not practice. Sounds like the Rams are leaning towards not playing on Sunday. Uh, we have some other injuries at corner, right? Troy Hill, um, David Long. So I think that Darion Kendrick is going to see a uh, some time this game. And my prediction is he is going to get an interception this game. We saw one from one rookie corner last week. I think we're going to see another one this week, specifically from Darion Kendrick. I think it's his time to shine, uh, his chance to kind of make his way up the depth chart uh, at Rams corner. We have some injuries, so maybe that's bold. Maybe it's not, but I think we're going to go back to back weeks with rookie cornerback interceptions. So that's one of my predictions. My other prediction is a Ben Skoranek touchdown. Uh, I think I did that last week too. We all want to see it. So this might be a little of me projecting, but I, I want to see Ben Skrana get a touchdown. I think that he will, uh, Jake, my other prediction, uh, it's slipping my mind, but let's say, you know what? Maybe Aaron Donald two sack game. I'd love to see it. Um, his next sack is 100, uh, by the way, for people who know Aaron Donald is at 99 career sacks. He is one away from 100, and I think he's going to get 100 and 101 uh, in this upcoming Jake uh, up, up, uh, upcoming game. Not upcoming Jake. Uh, your name just flashed flashed across my screen. Uh, Jake, what are your predictions? Stat predictions for this game. So, okay, in this game, I think Henderson. I said it last week. He's going to go over what 150 total. No, I think it was 100. I think I was pretty conservative in that approach because I thought he'd be used in the passing game. Uh, he wasn't. So I'm actually going to go with Henderson uh, coming away with 150 total yards this week from scrimmage. I think they'll use him more, and you know they're going to look at that tape and they're going to be like, "All right, we we got to get this guy going because he can definitely uh, you know make plays." So. I think you can expect that from Henderson. 150 is not a ton when you're factoring in the rushing and receiving element. And I already told you, Henderson's run the second most routes from the running back spot, only behind Joe Mixon. Uh, So I have to imagine that's coming. I mean, at least like the numbers support that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is on the defensive side of the ball, I agree with you. I think Aaron Donald, he hasn't really blown up yet. I feel like that game's coming and I just, I feel like it it could be this game. There's something about Aaron Donald. Like obviously the light is always, yeah, but it's just like Kyler Murray. Like Kyler Murray is the new Russell Wilson in this division for Aaron Donald to toss across the field. So I feel like it's just like, I don't know. He, he has so much success around Murray. Um, And I mean, In a lot of ways, this is a kind of a Murray revenge game, if you will, because the Rams absolutely embarrassed him like in the playoffs. So he's going to want to make, I I could see this guy holding on the ball a little bit longer, trying to make the big play. Aaron Donald crushes him. I'll say he gets, I'm going to say goes for three sacks in this one. 
I'm going to say Aaron okay. Donald goes for three sacks. I think this is his breakout game and it gets him ready for Monday Night Football against the Niners next week. But so that's the first thing. The second, or that's third, the that's the second thing. Third thing, sorry. The third thing, um, I'm going to say your guy, and I mean, he's kind of my guy too because I defend this guy like crazy, uh, Ben Skoranek. I'm going to say he goes for 75 receiving yards. I think with Van Jefferson being out again, you know, and this is the thing that we're forgetting here. Van Jefferson's out again, and Ben Skoranek is in again. And he's had a lot of opportunity to get comfortable. He started two back-to-back games this season. He started games last season. He's being utilized at fullback. Part of him has to feel like some ownership in this, you know, this offense, and he should. He had a really nice route I want to highlight uh, towards the sideline near the end of the game in the fourth quarter, and Matthew Stafford just missed him. If you're doing the math, that would have been probably around 50 yards right there. So I think he goes over 75. I'm not going to say touchdown because I know how this works. You get to the red zone. I mean, Cooper Cup is like the guy that Stafford goes to or they'll, they'll run it with Henderson. But uh, but I'll say 75 plus yards. And then say a last one here. I think the Rams are going to... This is just for fun. But last week, the Rams had a punt block. I think the Rams are going to block a punt this week and return the favor. So I'm going to throw that out there as well. I just, I got a feeling here. Like, I don't, I don't know who's going to block it. Don't we, ask me. That's way too, you know, but I think they'll block a punt. We'd love to see it. You never know. It's um, always an exciting play, except when it happens to you. Right. Uh, well, let's talk about score. Yes. Because I just don't, I don't know. I feel like, I, I feel like last week I kind of uh, roomed it. Oh, I was close last week. If if things had gone it, after the first half, I was pretty close. Um, the second half derailed everything. So I'm going to say, I do think the Rams are going to win. I'm going to say like Rams 21 to 14. Is that? 21-14, damn. I don't know. I don't know. That might be like a safe. I thought you I, were going to go with like a blowout. I don't know why. I thought you were. <laughs> no, I don't, because I don't think it's going to be, well, maybe 28-14. Not okay. give him an extra touchdown. I just, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm a little skeptical because with Kyler Murray, I feel like you just don't know. You don't really know what you're going to get. Like, he's just so inconsistent and I just am not sure. And also, I don't want to jinx, like last week, I was so confident and now I'm a little scared because I, we went through, we all went through that roller coaster of emotions with the Rams last week. Are you taking ownership it, for that? <laughs> You're like, oh, I jinxed them because I had them blowing them well, out. Well, I'm not. I don't think I jinxed them, but I just, I again with these predictions, the goal is to be close, right? We want to get it close. So, like, I don't want to. This is a safe. This is a safe prediction for me. If I were to come out and be like, oh, thirty something to seven, then that doesn't do me. You should good. put some money down on it. That's an actual uh, like thing out there. I don't know if you knew the movement of putting uh, your money where your mouth is with the actual score. You could put nine cents down and you'll win like no, what? I don't like bucks. You, you know me. I don't like betting on the Rams. I feel like it's superstitious to bet on your Yeah, uh, I feel that. <laughs> I feel that. Um, so I'm gonna say. I think the thing that we can all agree on here is that with that bend don't break soft shell until that starts kicking the way it is, like it did at the end of last year until they start really clicking on all cylinders at the beginning of the season, they always seem to kind of sputter. You know what I mean? And so I think it's going to take a little bit. Um, It is a new group. You know, it's not entirely new, but it is a little new. So I am going to give the Cardinals some... I'm going to give them 20 points um, in this game. But I'm going to say the Rams win 38 to 20. I think the Rams have a much better team. I think they're going to go to the playoffs. And I don't think the Cardinals are going to even be in the hunt. Uh, Probably around week 15, I think they'll already be eliminated. So I'm not very high on the Cardinals. But 
I do think, you know, rivalry game, this game could start off a little close, and then I think the Rams are going to run away with it. 38 to 20 for me. I think there's going to be a lot of touchdowns in this one for Matthew Stafford. Um, he's going to be back because he knows. I mean, he played a hell of a game last week, and those, unfortunately, uh, you know, those interceptions like overshadowed what was pretty much you take the interceptions away that's almost a perfect game alexis probably would have been five touchdown passes i mean if we're being honest yeah. those interceptions derailed it but um you know i just feel like he's gonna come out and just you know he'll be firing in all cylinders against the uh the cardinals i mean he's done that before um maybe he throws a pick who knows but i, I think the rams are gonna win 38 to 20 and you know, it's once again, it's kind of shades of last year. You had all the, the all these injuries last time they were in Arizona. Uh, the Rams won the game without Tyler Higby and without Jalen Ramsey. They had to start guys like Curry Moore off the practice squad. So uh, it, they're in very familiar territory as last year. Well, Jake, as long as it's a win, that's a win in our book, right? Um, yeah, not really, but it is. Um you know, we just want to see him go out, get the win. It's week three, division rival, away game. Um, exciting. Uh, and we will be covering it um, during the game on Twitter as we normally do. And we will be back after the game uh, with a recap episode. But guys, until then, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on social media at Downtown Rams. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake on Twitter at JK Bogan. And guys, we'll be back next week. But until then, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. If you haven't joined Prize Picks yet, you need to do it this season. Prize Picks allows you to pick up to five player props, and it gives you the option to 10x your winnings. Look at this right now. Tom Brady, right now, for a limited time only, is a free square because unless he gets hurt, he is going to be getting that 0.5. I'm going to select Tom Brady. I'm going to select Josh Allen going 275 and a half. Matthew Stafford going 265 and a half. We'll just throw Lamar Jackson in here and we'll just throw, let's just throw Justin Fields gets more than 191 and a half. So what you do here, you go, you put more, you put more or less. If you believe, you know, Lamar Jackson gets less than that. And there you go, 10x your winnings if, if this pays out. You will actually get paid out even if you only hit three of them. You'll get 0.4 times your money back. You'll get two times. You'll double your money if you get at least four out of five. Deposit today by using our promo code DTRAMS, and you'll get up to a $100 bonus match.